حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير اعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاته وسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما بقيه الله العظم روحي وارواح العالمين له الفداء رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واهل لقطه من لساني يفقه قولي what level you're going to be in jannat or your life forever is decided here so it's the level that you reach so these are the two things we discussed so far you know the length of life and the height of life now uh the reason i mentioned this for the kids right and obviously you know they will just know the terms but for adults they should know the meaning the fact is that if we don't know life then we will die a miserable death and most people die a miserable death right the Again, as I said, the only thing that you can be thankful for in L.A. when you die is Ebola, you know? That's there to do your last rites, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, life wasn't fun. It wasn't satisfying. It wasn't gratifying. We went through life. It was really something sorrowful when we don't know what it is, what we are doing. and hence if i know that i'm going to live forever and whatever i am going to become depends on here then it means that this life here is going to be very exciting i should be motivated to do everything the motivation for a believer comes from here i don't have time i need to do whatever i can i need to leave my stamp and my legacy behind I don't have time to waste around. I don't have time just to wander around and see what's going on here. Really, I need to be motivated, inspired to do everything that I can. And that's why a mu'min is involved in as many activities as you can find that are going to bring about ajr and sawab and reward for him. He's always involved in that doing something. I need to because I can't waste my time. And that's why he is not just doing things, he is trying to compete with others to do good. Why is that competition there for? The competition is because of the sense that I want to get as much as I can for my akhirat, for my real life. That's what it's for. So my friends, this is the height of life and we discussed this now i want to go to the width of life and i said the last week that we have i want to discuss that and and this will give you a complete picture of life of what it is there was a story almost real life right but it seems very surreal when you actually look at it Uh, but what happened is that this uh, grandfather came from a village in Pakistan, you know, from Punjab. He came here to see his family for the first time. His son was had immigrated to America, got married here. His kids were raised here, and so he moved here. and so after a long while his father came to see him the father when he came to see him right now his sons his grandchildren now are in high school and they're involved in sports they play basketball he has no clue what basketball is he knows cricket right so now what happened is that he uh the grandson said you want to come and see my game you know basketball game so he said all right let's go and then so what happened is that they went to see the basketball game and so he was seeing that there's one ball and all these players are there and they're all like 
playing with this ball and and you know so the grandson is explaining right that you know i mean you win by scoring so you try to steal the ball from others and he saw that this is stealing is haram you know <laughs> you know and they're f- f- fighting for a ball poor kids you know they must be poor right so he said you know uh take me to a place where you can buy basketballs so they went to walmart you know and so you know he then bought a lot of balls basketballs you know and he came back and then you know he saw these people playing the basketball so he said here have these balls now everyone can play with their own ball <laughs> and they don't have to now run after one ball right <laughs> and now everyone looks at that and says uh, but you know the, you know Now, why is he wrong? I mean, is he wrong or not, you know, by doing that? What did he what didn't he understand? I know it's funny, but what didn't he understand? It's important for us to know this. He didn't understand that the idea of a game a game becomes a game when there's limitation. If everyone has their own ball then there's no game. Everyone does their own thing. But if you want to have a game you need to create limitation, restriction and then it becomes a game. Then it becomes a game. It becomes exciting, it becomes inspiring, it becomes motivational. My friends, the reason Allah created restrictions in this dunya limitations in this dunya is that this life of this world can become a game when he says that the life of this world is a game it's actually a game everything is limited here jobs are limited there's one job and there's 100 applicants there's competition there's vying everyone vies for it resources are limited that's why you know not everyone is a billionaire there's only a list of billionaires the rest are not and when you look at the rest the 99. Point whatever 99% of the people are not that Why is that? Because there's not enough to make everyone billionaires. The issue is that if the restrictions were not there, then life will lo- the life here would lose its meaning. Life here would lose its meaning. If Allah gave mansions to every one of us, then you know what? And we had everything and we were all the bosses of our own businesses. and there's no workers you know there it won't be fun living it won't be fun living here the idea of a game is that there has to be restrictions when we speak about the width of life allah has created us in a realm that is restricted and has made us restricted that we can only use so much that we can only take so much we can't take unlimited if tar was great today but after two plates even the best of us quit some yes yeah, man you know i mean good for them you know and so what what happened Why did you quit? Why couldn't you do more? I mean, if that food is Allah's blessing, right? It's Allah's blessing. And Allah wants to give you blessings. But the problem is we can only take so much. We can only take so much. Imagine this, you know, for example, when you are doing whatever you can, you'll see that just only little bit you can take 
Knowledge. How much knowledge can you take? If I start learning, if I go to a college, anyone who has been to college or school know this. If you take, for example, 12 credit hours, you're a full-time student. If you take 15, you're pushing it. If you take 18, you're living on coffee. And if you take more than that, you know, but you know what I'm saying. The, there's only a limited amount of capacity we have to take knowledge. Food, we can only take so much. Allah's blessings, we can only take so much. Why is that? That limitation of us unable to use Allah's blessing is a limitation that Allah has created us with. We all have it. We all have it. I know some mu'minin from some parts of the world, I've been with them, when they have iftar, at first they serve chai. At first they serve chai. Why? And I asked, you know, why? I mean, as a, in the masjid, they all drink chai first and then they go for the food, right? I'm like, why are you drinking chai first, you know, and all that? He says, because chai is hot, it will expand the stomach. So we can get more in. <laughs> I mean, I was shocked. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know if that works or not, you know. <laughs> but that might be some sort of thing that they learned, you know. And, and, and you see, why? Because you only have a limited amount of capacity. Some people have, that's it. This, this limitation that we have is what makes us unable to use the blessings of Allah. So what Allah does is that He doesn't do israf. He will only give you that much blessing that you can use. If He gives you more than that, then it's not meant for you. It's meant for someone else. You see, Allah, when He gives you blessings and ni'mat and rahmat or rizq, your risk is what you can use. Everything other than that, Allah has given to you as an amanat to give to someone else. So if you see that there's more risk that you have that you're unable to use, then you should know that Allah has given that to you as an amanat that you give it to someone else that needs it. Because your risk is what you can use, and you can only use this much. You know, there was an interview I read a long time ago of this um, Arab guy from the Middle East who was an arms dealer. You know, and uh, the interview was because of the fact that he was one of the richest men in the world. And he used to do arms dealing between countries and nations, and so there's a lot of money involved in it. So, you know, I mean, some of us, our income is, for example, a yearly income, right? You know, our income is such that it can be counted as a yearly income. How much do you earn a year? Oh, 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, that's my yearly income. So your income is small enough that it can be counted as yearly. This guy, his income was counted by the hour or the, by the minute, sorry, by the minute. Every minute he earns this much million. Right? They say that the amount of wealth that he has, every minute he earns this many million, you know, on the average, right? They put the average there. So obviously a rich guy, right? So they had an interview on uh, his yacht. Now, he's one of those people, you know, my, you know, I mean, you have a lot of people who have yachts. And the yachts are in the harbor, but his yacht was so big that it couldn't get into the harbor, you know. So they had to go to the him, you know, in the sea. So he, we, they, the interviewer was taken there by helicopter, and they went there, and he was having an interview. And obviously, you know, for example, for the people of dunya, this is like a big thing, right? Oh my God, you're you're such this, you're such that, and they're like enamored by him. So the interviewer is asking, so how much do you really have? How much do you really have? 
you know. So the answer that he gave is interesting. The answer that he gave is interesting. He says, I have the clothes that I wear, the bed that I sleep on, and the food that I eat. Everything else is useless for me. What, what, if you're asking what I have, I only have what I eat. <laughs> right, what I'm going to do with all the, f all the food in the fridge? <laughs> I can get the biggest fridge with all the food, but I can't use it. It's not mine. I only have this bed that I sleep on. But that's it. I only have the clothes that I wear. I can buy a thousand suits, you know, all expensive, but the thing is that I can only wear one at a time. That's mine. Everything else is not mine. So if you want to ask me how much wealth I have, the only wealth I have is what I use. Think, and now think about it. This is the idea that whatever you have right now in your life, what you're using is what's yours. Everything else other than that is not yours. It is what Allah calls a deception. When Allah says that this dunya is darul ghurur, it's a deception. What does it mean? It, ma it makes you think that all of this is yours. It makes you think that, that I have a million dollars in my account. It makes you think that's mine. It's not. What's yours is only what you can use. Everything else, there is a question mark on it that's going to be audited on the Day of Judgment. So I gave you this, but Allah, I thought that was mine. But it wasn't yours. You didn't use it. But, you know, for some reason I thought it was mine. Uh, you can't just assume it's yours. I mean, it's clear that it wasn't because you never used it. It's going to go to someone else. Either it's going to go away by you voluntarily or by force. And by force, I mean death. You die, that money is going to go away to someone. Either your children, if you don't have children, it goes to the state. Someone's going to take it. That's what Imam Ali said, right? He said, it's wealth that you have, you know, someone else is going to take it. It's not going to be yours. Whatever is yours is what you can eat. This limitation of how much we ate, how much we can handle, this is called the width of life. This is the width of life. I can't use that much. This is what I can use. And if I know that I can use this, then I don't have more capacity. So now my job... And my job is to see how much can I increase this capacity. How much can I raise it? How much can I do this? Some people have more capacity than others. My friends, let me put it in another way so that you understand this better. Send the salawats. Now, tell me, do you really think, you know, that Allah is generous? He is, right? You, do you believe that he's not stingy? He's not, right? Very good. Do you think that he has an unlimited amount of wealth? Right? That if he makes every one of us billionaires, he's not going to run short. Right? So he can give us a pocket allowance, you know, in nine digits, ten digits. And there won't be any hurt on his pocket. That's true, right? That, that's God. We know God. He's unlimited. What he has is infinite. And he's generous and wants to give. What is it that's holding him back from giving? Why, Allah, aren't you giving? You know, you're generous. You have enough. Why are you not giving me? Because our capacity is limited. You see, we are like a glass. If you put water, you'll see you'll only put that much water that you can fit there. Anything more than that, it will fill over and it's not yours. It will fill over. 
And hence, what you have is that much capacity. Only that much capacity as you have. Otherwise, he wants to give. Let me just give an example, and then you'll understand this better. You know, for example, you see that if you, well, you know, what I say about you know, writing books, leave that alone, right? Let's say, for example, uh, we donate something to the masjid, right? And, uh, for example, you know, uh, and everyone, now we started Imam Ali Center, and everyone is giving something or the other, right? And, uh, for example, I donated the vacuum, let's say. I donated the vacuum. So, of all the things in the masjid, you know, the thing that came from me, let's say, is the vacuum. Now, for some reason, everything that when we are talking about the masjid and this and that, I want to bring everyone's attention to the vacuum. <laughs> you know, if you notice the vacuum. <laughs> now, I mean, really, I just gave that vacuum. But now I want everyone to pay attention to the vacuum. Allah gave me tawfiq and blessing that I could donate a vacuum for his cause. But now I want everyone to know that I did it. You see, a little blessing Allah has given me has gone where? To my head. Right? It's gone to my head right away. Let alone, you know, writing a book. You know, you write a book, for example, you will see that the title of the book is, you know, you know, I don't know, Tawheed or Allah or whatever you write it. You will see that, you know, I want my names in bigger fonts. <laughs> you have a small artwork of Allah and my name in bigger fonts, right? And you see that. Allah gave you the tawfiq of doing this much work, but, you know, it went to my head. Really, it went to my head. Now, imagine if we had done greater things. Oh, my God, you know, if we had more fazilat than that, if we had greater tawfiq and blessing than that to do greater things, you know, I mean, we would just, you know, be on our way to being God now, you know. Worship me. Praise me. You know, I mean, that's how we will be. And that's why you see that we don't have that much topic to do that. Really, if, you know, if we were the one, if we were the one who struck Amr ibn Abduwad, if we were the one who uh, took out the door of Khaybar. Imagine that. If we were the one who did that, I mean, I tell you, right? Islam would be in my name, you know? <laughs> it would be in my name, <laughs> you know? I'm that guy who did this, you know? We'll be ruling over others, dominating over them. It'll go straight to our head. Our head will become so big, they won't be placed on this earth to put it. This is how much our ego will become. But when you look at Imam Ali, I mean, how many achievements does he have that for every one of those achievements, any one of those achievements, anyone would dream to have in their name. Dream to have. Oh, I wish I was that. We have, you know, I won't say hadith, sayings of Umar ibn Khattab, you know, who said, what? Who said that? You know, I wish I had these achievements that Ali made if they were in my name. You know, you know, I wouldn't just be the Khalifa, I would be a prophet after the prophet, right? And I'm just making the last part up. He didn't say that, right? <laughs> what I'm saying. But he wished for it. So why did he wish for it? Did he shoot that, you know? I mean, he has so much achievement. And then when you look at Imam Ali, 
with all the achievements that he made, with all the greatness that he had, and everyone is indebted to them, each of those things, for example, in one of these, for example, Rasulullah said that everyone is indebted to Ali. Islam is indebted to Ali. I mean, Islam means that Allah, he, you know, when he looks at Imam Ali and what he has done for Islam and to save Allah's message, you know, I mean, it's amazing what he has done. And then when he unhooked, unhinged the door of Khaybar, here Imam Ali is walking back and people saw that. They saw that he just took out this door that takes 20 men to open. With a, his own thing, with those bare hands, he took it out. Some places it says with two fingers. Just like that, he took it out. People saw that. The people inside saw it also because they were like looking down from the... Or they say, oh, he's not going to get back that door. And they see the door fly. <laughs> what happened? You know, they were looking at that door. And on the other hand, the Muslims saw what was going on. And no matter what you are and how much you hated him or how much you disliked him and how much you were jealous of him, but the fact that he did that gained the admiration of everyone. I mean, everyone was talking about him. Did you just see what Ali did? He saved the game. You know, he just blew away everything. Blew it out of the water. It's finished. I mean, everyone was talking about Imam Ali. And, you know, this was the time, you know, when, for example, after a good speech, everyone is like, you know, <laughs> a good speech, you know. And there you go, you know. Yes, of course, you know. And here he is saving Islam. And even the prophet saying this, that what, what Ali has done, he is, has made everyone indebted to him. And then when Imam Ali walks back to the prophet, he walks back to the prophet and to the Muslims, and the Muslims are like, you know, just cheering him and praising him and all these things. And the only thing that Imam Ali could tell the Muslims, the only thing that he could announce and the only thing that he said to them is that it wasn't me. That was Allah who did that. You know, because people are ignorant. They might start to treat him like a guard, you know. They have done that before. So he said, no, it's Allah who did that. Not me. It's his strength. You know, quwwat rabbani that's his strength that did it, not my strength. You know, he's the one who gave me the strength. The fact is that, you know, look at him. All these things you said and you are pointing to Allah. And one small thing that we do, and we want everyone to see our vacuum. <laughs> I mean, really, my friends, why is that? The reason is because Allah says, I can't give you more than this because if I do, it's going to go to your head. You will be destroyed. You will become Fir'aun. You will become Namrud. That's why I keep you here because you can't handle it. Well, what, but when, he, when Allah wants to give, He gives everything. He's able to give everything. So when He gave to Ali, when He gave to Ahlul Bayt, the more He gave, the more they bowed. The more he gave, the more they went into prostration before him. He keeps on giving, they keep on bowing before him. And so he kept on giving until he gave them the power of the universe. Why do they have the power of the universe? Why did Allah say that now you have authority over everything? Why? Because every time Allah gives, it doesn't go to their head. In fact, their head goes down before Allah. So Allah has the power to give. He has enough to give. We can't take it. We are unable to take that from Allah. We are incapable of taking that. So what Allah wants us to do in this life is to grow that capacity. 
to grow that capability. The width of life is this restriction that is there. And I'll explain that restriction, how many types of restrictions we have. And then, inshallah, we'll start to understand so many things in life. So many things in life that you are going through, you'll understand by understanding the width of life and these restrictions, these limitations and the things that we are going through. Then you will see how they play in your ultimate life. So inshallah, we will go through that in the next week that we have. One more week left. And I want to wrap that up and explain that in these days that we have.